a title I want to talk about. Actually, I want to talk about the spirit of bitterness. The spirit of bitterness. The spirit of bitterness comes from, it comes from actually being hurt. It comes from being hurt and unresolved hurt or unhealed hurt brings about bitterness. There's so many people that are bitter. They're so hurt. And there's an old saying that misery loves company. And what happens oftentimes, people who become miserable, they want to hang around other people who are miserable to feed their miserability. And so that's why they associate, if you find that, you even find that just like each cattle or each species, they associate with their own kind, like every cat hanging around with cats, dogs hanging around with uh, dogs, uh, lions, and all of that. And see, it's the same spiritually. So with with spirit, you find that people who are going through certain things, some kind of way, they become attracted to each other. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a drawing. Uh, just like broke people hang around broke people, rich people hang around rich people. There's a drawing. There's a drawing. The thing about it, when you are hurt, and you see other people come around you that hurt, don't talk to them. See, because the only thing that they can give you when they're hurt is hurt advice. It's hurt advice. That's just like, just like a person who's having, if you're having a problem with a relationship with a man or a woman, but if you go to your girlfriends or your boyfriends for advice and they don't have a man, or those guys, they don't have a woman, the only kind of advice that they're going to give you is advice from somebody that don't have a man or don't have a woman. Their advice is going to become tainted or biased because they hadn't been healed. And so you need to, we need to, uh, and the thing that you need to understand, you need to separate yourself from people who can't help you. Why waste your time with people who can't help you, but gravitate to people that can help you, that people that are healed, people that are professional, people that can encourage you. And that's what you need. That's what you need. And see, the thing about it, when a person is bitter, what they will do, they will want to bite or they want to cut other people. You find a lot of people like that when they're hurt. They want to hurt other people. That's what I'm saying. Hurt people, hurt, pe hurt people. And that's what we have. And see, the thing about it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of title you have. It doesn't matter what, how level of stage that you are even uh, in, the, uh, in the gifts of the Spirit or even in the gifts that God gave. You could be an apostle. You could be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, a teacher. But you can become bitter. And how does bitter bitterness comes about? Bitterness comes about, like I said, hurt. Hurt that's not dealt with, but hurt that's held in. Hurt that's not released. Hurt that's, that's not brought out. Uh, you keep it to yourself. That's why when you become hurt, you want to go to God and ask God to deal with it and help, help you with that hurt. Because what happens when you become hurt, and if you don't release hurt, hurt will turn, turn against you. And it will get in your heart. Then what's in your heart is going to come out. So that's why people are defensive. Also, what people also do, also what people also do when they become hurt. When they become hurt, you find some people who are loud. You find certain people who they talk a certain way. Oftentimes, they use a certain mirage or a certain weapon. Uh, oftentimes, we are gifted, but oftentimes when we become hurt, we use our gifts as a weapon to keep people away as opposed to allow people to, to come in, such as your heart. Some of you, and some of you that will listen to me, some of you, you lovers, you love people. You love, you love, you're, you're a smiling kind of person, you're approachable. But what happens uh, happen sometimes when you become hurt, the, the gift that you use to draw people or to befriend people, now you're using that gift to analyze people, discern people, to keep people away. And see, that's a bad place to be because many of you, when you're in that place, you're uncomfortable. That's an uncomfortable place to be where everybody's a suspect. Everybody you can't trust. It's almost like, if I can use for an example, God bless you uh, for coming on, uh, Sally. It's almost like when you're hurt, when a person is hurt, it's almost like being locked up in prison. For the first time. And in this prison, when you're locked up in prison, you have a certain mindset in this prison. Now, in this prison, when you're in prison, when people are in prison, that mindset is that you can't trust nobody. Everybody's suspect. You got to do whatever you can to survive. And so, even also, when you take a shower, you're in your mind, I can't drop this soap. Because if I drop this soap, then somebody might try to hurt me. And so you have a mindset, you think a certain way. And also at nighttime, 
uh, when you lay down or when you lay down, you got to lay down with one eye open and one eye closed because you can't trust somebody because somebody might try to creep in and try to hurt you or somebody might try to do something to you. And so you always have this certain disposition. You always have this certain type of mindset. And see what happens uh, naturally. So when you've been hurt and you're that spiritual prison and that prison is called hurt or bondage, what happens is that if you have everybody as a suspect, which means when people, when God might send somebody to you to help you, to bring you out of your prison as a friend, you'll push them back too. Because you can't discern what's real and what's fake because you hurt. Because every time, every time even people come around in the back of your mind that hurt is talking to you and saying, well, you can't trust him. Well, you can't trust her. Because just like they did it, you, it happened to you before, it could happen again. And so now you put up these walls. And that wall sometimes is a smile. That wall sometimes, sometimes is to just talk loud. You have some people who talk loud all the time. And so that talk loud all the time is a mechanism to make people think you're something that you're not. And the reason why you're talking loud to keep people away. Because you're afraid if, if you allow them to get in your heart or get close enough, they might see you hurt. Or they might judge you. Or they might hurt you. Just like the other person did. And so now it's a prison. It's torment. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. And hurt also brings fear. Because what you would do, you would try to get them before they get you. So in your mind, you're in your own world. So you, what you would try to do, you would try to set up something. You would try to control. You would kind of control every step of your life. You would try to control it instead of allow God to trust or have faith. You cannot have faith. And now for you that say that you love Christian, uh, you're a Christian, you say you love God. How can you say that you love God? Because love, to love God, that means you trust God. To trust God, that means that you believe in God. To believe in God, you allow God to lead you in situations. How can you say that? Because when you trust, when you hurt, you can't trust people because you have an issue with trust. You have an issue with believing. And so if this you, you need to let it go. You need to let go of that hurt. You do, you do, you need to let go of that prison. You need to let go of that facade. It's a facade. It's a facade. You're trying to pretend. It's just like a hypocrite. It's just like a hypocrite, an actor. See, an actor or an actress, uh, one of the definitions, they are called hypocrites. And a hypocrite is someone who's able to steal away in a certain role and steal away in a certain character to make you believe that, uh, that you're them. And once you believe that you're them, they will treat you like that character. And that's what happened when you become hurt. When you become hurt, you become like a hypocrite. You become like an actor or an actress where you, you, you take on a certain role where you make people think that you're a certain way. You make people think that you, you're this type of person when you're not that person inside. You're smiling. You're smiling in public, but silently you, you're in pain. And it's just like that duck. It's just like that duck that you see. In the pond, those ducks that you see in the pond, when you look at the duck, you think that duck is chilling and cool because that duck is above the water. See, but see, men of you, you like that duck. When everybody see you, oh, oh, they cool. Oh, they strong. But inside, you're hurting. See, because that duck, if you can just get beneath the water, if you just, just get beneath where his legs are, and what you will see, you'll see that duck is pelling, feet pelling, just trying to stay above water, just trying to survive, <coughs> just trying to get to the other side. Just trying to live. See, that's middle of you. You like that duck. And see, above water, when everybody's seeing you, that facade, see, that character, uh, that hypocrite, you're hypocritical. Uh, you look strong. You look strong. You look righteous. You're the loudest one in church. You're the one that seems like you got it all together. That relationship is all together. But you're the one that's crying out inside for help. You are that one. You're the duck. You're the duck that's trying to make it. But I just come here today just to encourage you to let you know, let you know that spirit of bitterness. God wants to root that bitterness out because that bitterness, see the thing about that you need to know, and I'm going to give you the scripture and I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. But the Bible says, the Bible says that, and I believe it is Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and I believe it's somewhere maybe the 15th verse. The Bible says to uh, uh, follow peace and holiness with all men. You need that. As believers, as people in this world, you need to follow peace and holiness with all men. That's, that's an instruction. That's a command. It's not God is not asking you to. 
But it's a command, follow peace and holiness with all men. Because when you follow peace and holiness with all men, then you operate under the will of God. And in other words, the Bible says that when a man ways please God, then he'll make even his enemies at peace with him. But the Bible says to follow peace and holiness uh, with all men, uh, less, uh, less looking diligently, less looking diligently, you fail the grace of God. Because if you're not following, if you're not following with peace and holiness, you're going to fail the grace of God. You're going to fail the gift that God gave. Because what's going to happen, the Bible said there's going to become a root of bitterness in you. <clears throat> and if that bitterness, if that root is not dealt with, if that root in your spirit, if that root, if the contact, the contact, that situation, when it happened, that person, that situation, that problem, even that fear, that mind, that torment, if it's not dealt with at the root, if it's not destroyed at the root, that root is going to spring up in you. And what's going to happen, you're going to become troubled inside. And then once you become troubled inside, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. The Bible says that it's not what goes in you that defiles you, what comes out that defiles you. And that's what you're going to become judged by. And also, that's your fruit. That's going to become the seed. That's, going to, that's where your fruit is going to come. What you speak out, how you treat people. When, you, when you're short with people, when you're nasty toward people, you are planting seeds. That's why you have to be careful even when you're hurt. Even when you're going through what you're going through, how you respond and how you re launch out or how you reach out. Because what you do to a person, it's going to come back to you. Because God said, the Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever man soft. You know what you put in the ground, what you speak out, what you speak in, uh, it's going to come up again. What you sow, it's going to reap. And the thing about it that you must understand and realize, when it comes up, when the harvest come up, because you're going to have a harvest, it's going to become greater. See, some of you, you're facing what you're facing right now because of seeds that you're planted. You planted certain seeds and it's coming up. Case in part relationship. That relationship that you're in, you hate it. It's horrible. It feels like you're under curse. It is because you knew better. Mama told you not to do it. Daddy told you not to do it. God told you not to do it. Even you were raised not to do it, but you did it anyway. Because you want to appease your flesh. Because you just want to become rebellious. Because you're over 18, you're grown. And you can do what you want to do. Yeah, you can do what you want to do, but there's a consequence when you do what you want to do. That's why God puts... People in our life. God, that's why God put parents in our life, uh, pro prophets, leaders in our lives to help us. Not to control us, but simply to help us. That's what grace is there for. God's grace is a gift. And that grace also is, is, is given also to give us salvation, to protect us, uh, to, to save us from sin, but also to protect us from sin and from ourselves. It's protect us from evil. Because the only way we become knocked and we become abused because when we get into sin, because the wages of sin is death. When we do things outside of God, when we do things in flesh, when we do things uh, out of our own emotions without seeking God, when we do things without consulting God, when we do things out of a heated moment, when we do things out of anger, when we do things when we're not thinking, that will be the seed of what we're doing. It's in flesh. And the harvest of it is going to come flesh because the Bible says when you sow in the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh corruption. But when you walk in the spirit, you will not sow or reap or fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't, don't, totally different. That's why the Bible tells us to know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's where many believers and Christians get in, get in problems and get in trouble. We look at people after the flesh, but not after the spirit. And for that reason, right there, we're disobedient. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The, the way of a transgression is hard. The reason why your life is hard is because you're not doing it God's way. That's why. You want to want to know why it's so hard? It's because you're disobeying God. Because God said that they should hear my voice, hard not your heart. But you, God speaking, but you're not listening. But you keep doing what you want to do because you're grown. And so as a result of it, you're suffering. You are suffering. But also, God loves us so much. In that same grace... Even though we're drawn away in our own lust because we, we got the big bitches and we want to do what we want to do. We don't want to listen to nobody. We don't want to listen to nobody rules or nothing like that because, because we want nobody controlling us. See, that's another thing. When you're hurt and when you're bitter, you try to control not just yourself, but you try to control other people. You try to control how other people even think. You try to control other people how they even talk to you. You try to control and see, control also is comes from fear, but also control can become from the spirit of witchcraft. Manipulation, where you can manipulate people to make people do certain things. In your mind, you're telling them one thing that you want them to do, but in your heart, your motive is something different. That's a seed too, deception.
When you sow that seed, that's going to come up again too. So don't become bamboozled and hooked hook by, by that. But that's why God said, God said, God said, God said with the Father, follow peace and holiness with all men. Uh, well, with, well, with, well, without, well, without, no man shall see the Lord. Without it, you cannot see God without following peace and holiness. In other words, you're going to go to hell if you don't follow peace and holiness. And peace and holiness come from having a relationship with the Prince of Peace. And who is the Prince of Peace? Jesus. And so if you want peace, if you're living in confusion, if you want peace, go to Jesus. And how do you go to Jesus? You go to Jesus by saying, God, forgive me. God, help me. My situation, what I'm feeling, that bitterness, take it away. And the Bible said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be sealed. They shall be healed. So all you got to do is just ask him to help you. And then when you ask him to help him, change. Try to change. If you want to change, you can change. If you want help, you ask for help. You cannot, act, you cannot help nobody that don't want to be helped. A person will become delivered. The, the beginning of a person, anybody delivers when they get to a place where they acknowledge that they got a problem and they ask for help. And then once they ask for help, then they got to go through the process. Now, in the process, it's going to be uncomfortable because then when you go through the process of, 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 of change, then what you're going to do, you're going to go through, uh, what's the word? You're going to go through withdrawals where your flesh is going to speak to you. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel uneasy. You're going to go through that. You're going to go through those changes. But in those changes, God loves us so much in that grace. He said that his grace is sufficient. In other words, he'll be there with you. And so all you got to do is hold on to his grace. Even if you got and you got out beyond his grace. But if you call on him and get back within the grace of his parameters of his word, then he'll help you. And he'll give you a shift to go through it. And he'll give you, he'll take away that root of bitterness. And he'll give you peace and holiness. Does that make sense? If this word has really helped you, please share it with someone. Please share it with someone. Don't use, don't allow your hurt to become your weapon. Don't allow a root of bitterness to come up and spring up in you. Wherein you're, you're just like a walking, you're like a walking volcano. You're like a walking, a walking hurricane. You're like a, a, a walking, uh, just something, just, just the range where you snap at everything and everybody. That's why when you become angry so much, when, when, when somebody says something to you, they set you off. That comes from hurt. That hurt had not been dealt with. Because really frustration, uh, frustration is the definition of frustration uh, is pinned up anger. When you become angry, you something is in you that you not that you hadn't dealt with. You just held on to it. You need to let that go. Let go and let God. Because your healing is in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. All you gotta do is say, God, set me free. God, release me. Release me from my bitterness. Release me from my from my pain. And then when you ask God to forgive you, then let it go. And see, forgiveness. Is a lifestyle. It's not that you talk about it. You talk about it one time, then you keep doing it. But when you talk about it, then after you try to walk down the vocation of your repentance, that means it's a mindset. You change the way you think. You change the way you walk. And lastly, you change the way you talk. God says, when, when, when you ask for forgiveness, when you repent from that thing, and you know what it is, God says, change the way you talk about it. Don't talk about it no, no more. Stop resurrecting things that are dead. That you, God has pronounced dead in your life. If you wanted to die, keep it dead. See, because the thing that you feed is going to live. If you want pain in your life to die, stop feeding it. If you want hurt in your life to, to stop talking in your life, stop feeding it. If you want fear to, to stop speaking in your life, kill it. Don't feed it. Hear me. Hear me. Hear what I'm saying. If you want things in your life to die, you got to stop talking about it. But if you want things in your life to live, you got to have a conversation with you. You got to plant seeds. If you want God in your life to live, peace in your life to live, joy in your life to live, feed him. Feed that joy. Feed God. Because God said, the Bible said, he, they that hungers and thirst after righteousness, you know what the Bible said? They shall be filled. It's not they might be filled. God said, you will be filled. If you go after God, if you go after God, if you chase after God, if you apprehend after God, God, I want you. God, I, I, God, I need you. God, I need to know. God, I need to understand. If you go after God, God going to fill you. And once, once God fill you, Anything that's not like God, like gossip, hurt, bitterness, it's going to leave. Because sweet and bitter water, based on the Bible, it can't flow from the same fountain. Hear me. I'm done. God bless you. Please share. Please share because there are so many people that are bitter and hurt and they don't know how to get it out. They, they keep, it's like a revolving door. They keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. It ain't getting no better, but it's getting worse. Getting worse. Getting worse. Your, your, your situation is getting worse because you keep talking about it. If you want to get better, kill it. Stop talking about it. 
Stop talking about let it die. Let it die. Let it die. It's just that simple. Let it go. Well, it's, it's easier said than done. Yeah, it is. But anything worth having is worth fighting for. Because it's easy to gossip. It's easy to complain. But it takes work. It takes work. It takes work to trust. It takes work to have faith. It takes work to believe. God wants to take your issue out of trust. Because the issue is your pain. That issue is that is that is that is that stick. It's that plug. It's that, that splitter. That's then got in you. And it can't get out. That one, that.